Welcome back to Yanmar Central. We're going to be changing the rear end fluid in this Yanmar 1500D and we're also going to be replacing the hydraulic fluid filter. First thing we're going to do is remove the oil cap. So this is going to allow the oil to drain faster. Next thing, we have two drain bolts. So let me zoom out for you guys. Right there is one and then there's also one right here. Literally just right in front of the draw bar. Third thing we have here is a very, very clean oil pan. So the fluid I put in here is actually brand new fluid. Um, I didn't have the filter on hand at the time, so I had no choice but to clean the filter that was in there, put it back in and put new fluid in. So we're gonna be reusing the fluid that actually comes out of here. Both of your drain bolts are 17. So there's one, as you guys can see, that's some pretty clean fluid. The next drain bolt. And there we go. As you guys can see, it is necessary to remove both drain bolts. There is a bit of a wall inside the transmission. Uh, as you guys can see, so the back is still draining out. The front is already drained out, but also the front has a little lower pocket than the back. So like I said, it is necessary to have both drain plugs and to remove both drain plugs. I've gone ahead and jacked up the rear end here. I'm gonna remove this tire because it's a lot easier to get to the filter and the cap. You guys may have noticed how easy these came out. So these lug bolts in the hub is an M16 by 2.0. I tapped the hub and dyed the bolts and they come out a whole lot easier. All right, so this is the cover we're taking off. You have three little bolts and they're gonna be a 13 millimeter. So we're gonna be taking this cover off. Easiest way that I've found to take these covers off is to actually take your pocket knife, grab a hammer and just kind of tap at it just like that. And it's already off of there. So here's our filter, and I think you guys can see, obviously, why it needs replaced. So here's our new filter. This is the part number for it. I got this from southernfarmequipmentimports.com. So if you go on their website, go to the search and type in SFHS, you have to include the dash 4190, this filter will come up. So I just have a couple concerns with this filter. They said it has a spring but it doesn't really have any spring type action. So the original filter, as you guys can see, is just slightly different. Um, and the fact that instead of this mesh stuff and a spring, it's only got the spring. And maybe that's the downfall of these older style original filters, but I'm hoping that this will fit and work because um, the problem with this is if it doesn't have a tight seal to both sides, it could potentially bypass dirty oil with metal filings in it. So we're gonna get everything cleaned up here and we're gonna make sure that this thing is gonna fit correctly. So again, this is where your pocket knife comes in handy. Normally what I'll do is just like this, take and scrape the gasket right off this surface. Um, also, you can use a Dremel um, or an air tool with a wire brush Either of those will work pretty well, uh, but it definitely helps to scrape the gasket off to begin with. So that's the first step for both surfaces, both this and the transmission housing. We're gonna just scrape the gasket off and then wire brush it. All right, so everything is scraped clean. So we're gonna clean it up just a little bit more with this Dremel here. All right, so here's everything after being wire brushed. So the next order of business is we're gonna test fit this filter. All right, guys, very, very, very important here. You have an open end of the filter and you have a kind of a screened end of the filter, okay? The screened end of the filter goes towards this side of the tractor, okay? 
The other side of the tractor is the hydraulic fluid pickup. It's the line that runs to your pump and feeds your pump. So make sure the open end is towards the end that picks up the oil. All right, so open end going in here this way. Okay, there we go. So this is looking pretty good. It's a, actually a pretty nice tight fit. As you guys can see, or hopefully can see, there's a little gap there. So this filter is designed and made correctly. The three bolts that came out of the cap are gonna get cleaned up on the wire wheel. All right, these are in pretty good shape. Let's go put them on. Before we put the bolts in, we're gonna clean the surface. We got some brake parts cleaner and a brand new rag. Start out with this guy. We have some of this Permatex Ultra Gray Gasket Maker. Okay. Next step, we're gonna slip the open end of the filter in here first. Like I said before, the end that's just a cap is where the screened end goes. The open end, make sure, is towards the side that picks up the oil. Okay, coming back to the bolts, we don't want these things to freeze up in there, so I've got some anti-seize lubricant. We're gonna put a generous amount of this stuff on each bolt. Now we'll take the cap and one bolt, install the cap, and install one bolt. Install the next two bolts. I've gone ahead and switched over to a smaller wrench to do the final torque. These don't really need to be too tight, just snug. It's time to reinstall both the drain plugs. Before we do that, we're gonna give the drain plugs a good wipe down as well as the sealing surface for both of them on the bottom of the transmission. And we're also going to be replacing the O-ring that goes on these. So I have a O-ring kit right here, it came from Napa. It was only like 20 or 30 bucks if I remember correctly. It's got a huge assortment of O-rings. So uh, when you're dealing with old stuff, especially like these tractors, it's really handy to have something like this. And as you guys can see, pretty much the first one that I pulled out of there is the correct size O-ring. So I highly recommend you guys going to get one of these kits. They're super, super nice. Both the drain plugs are ready to go. So I wanted to show you guys real quick. You just want to take a look at your ceiling surfaces. You want to make sure that the O-ring, the old O-ring, is not stuck to the ceiling surface because that happens a lot. And if you double O-ring this, it's not going to seal. So just something to watch for. All right, let's get these plugs put in here. You guys may have noticed there was a drip of oil on the sealing surface under here, but that's not a big deal. As you guys can see, an O-ring seals these up. So having a little drip of oil on there is not too big of a deal, unlike some other types of seals. Again, these are just drain plugs, so you don't have to torque them down super, super tight. As per the directions, we're supposed to let this dry for 24 hours. So we're gonna let this thing sit overnight before we refill it with oil. For the lug nut torque spec, I set mine to 100. There's lots of great torque spec charts for, uh, for different sizes of bolts. These are, like I said, M16 by 2.0. Like I said, it, it's really up to you guys where you set these for torque, but I put them at 100. One other thing that's really important that I don't see many people doing is cleaning off these fill and check caps. Okay, so the tractor is set. We have the oil in a safe place for overnight. I've just got some tools to clean up. And then we'll come back in the morning and fill this thing up with oil. Well, it is a perfect day for putting oil on this tractor. So I think we're going to have to move it in here, but we got to get some of this stuff moved out first.
Now it's time to put the fluid in the tractor. Um, there's not even a half an hour on this fluid. So we're still gonna run this. This is how we're gonna filter it out. Basically, I have a rag, some rubber bands around. This is a hyper tough container. I think it's from Rural King. So these things are super handy. So if you guys have a chance to pick one of these up, I definitely highly recommend this thing. All right, so there's six quarts. So that's a gallon and a half. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that in the tractor to start. Time to put some more oil in the measuring container. The container is completely empty. So we're up to five quarts. So six quarts plus five quarts, we got 11 quarts. So we're already over that two and a half gallon mark by one quart. If you didn't know, right behind your fill plug here, there is the check plug. So this is it right here comes out of that little hole there. Stick it back in there. All right. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but right about here is where the level of the oil is. So I know some of you guys are gonna be asking about this. So let's go over the oil real quick. The proper oil to put in the rear ends of these tractors is gonna be this J20C or JD303 fluid. This is stuff that I got from Rural King once again. Um, actually, pretty decent stuff. I like it. And uh, as long as you keep up with your oil changes and whatnot, I mean, this stuff, or pretty much anything that's this J20C or JD303 is going to do good for you. One and a half quarts. Okay, and that looks pretty daggone good. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but looks like it's just slightly over full. You don't wanna overfill these things, but a little bit is probably not gonna hurt it. So guys, I would say probably to stay within the acceptable range on the stick, probably anywhere from 11 to 12 quarts is acceptable. So right around that three gallon mark. Wipe around the top of it, reinstall it. And that's a done deal. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. If you guys found this video useful or helpful, don't forget to rate and comment and don't forget to subscribe. We're gonna have a bunch more videos like this coming out very soon. And also check out that description box below. I'm gonna have other related videos just like this one linked down there. So don't forget to check out the description box. That's it for now, guys. We'll catch on the next one. Peace.